arrived today. The MFJ 1026 noise canceller. Um, I've been having a little bit of uh, QRM interference um, noise problems, as everyone does locally with all the uh, hardware and stuff that's around, causing noise. And I've put another long wire antenna up in the back garden, so now I've got two antennas out there for HF. So I thought I would try an MFJ, see if I can get rid of some of the noise. I um, don't think anyone's done an unboxing video with one of these, not that there's really much to unbox. Let's go through this rather quickly. little antenna that you get with it, which I'm not going to be using, because I've got my outside antenna. Let's just see what's in the box then. Not much to show really. There's the unit as it comes out of the box. Um, MFJ stuff is, um, you know, it's, it's functional. It's never the best in quality. As anyone that's got their equipment knows, it's made down to price. Um, but that's pretty much what you get in the box. And uh, you get a, uh, your manual is now online. So they don't include a manual with it. You have to go over to download the manual. I suppose it's fair enough. It saves on weight. They're shipping these things in from the States, I suppose. Um, quite a short power lead. It's uh, not very long and not fused either, which is, uh, isn't ideal, but never mind. Um, looking at the unit, it's quite small. Um, yeah, which is good. Not, no complaints about that. Quite a small unit. Um, again, we'll read the manual, but I think you're going to need to read the manual to get the best out of this device. On the back, we've got a main antenna socket, radio, TR control, which I'm going to be using. I'll talk about that in a minute. And the sort of power socket there. But I'm right. So it is. It is budget budget stuff, really. The um, MFJ stuff. Um, but it's certainly a lot quicker than I probably got round to making one myself. Um, and this is the little uh, antenna that goes in the top there. Uh, but we won't we won't be using that. It's a little or no use to me at all. Anyway, um, the TR control. This is a lead I got from eBay, from Technofix. Um, and basically, what this does is. Um, every time the uh, FT840 there keys up, it actually switches this out of circuit. Now, um, this unit does have some RF sensing capability to be able to switch itself out of the circuit, uh, but it's renowned uh, for not being that great. And I don't want to cause any damage to the unit, and they, they recommend that um, if you're going to use the unit, that it's preferential to buy one of these cables or make one of these cables. Again, this was £10 off of eBay, so I wasn't going to be bothering making one. I can buy one for £10. And this basically um, disables this when I key up. A bit like uh, the linear amplifier control cables. Um, you can, these are, the guy sells them for other, for other makes of radio as well. <coughs> I got this one as it matched my radio. So we'll get it plugged in and uh, we'll see how it performs. Right, just made up a, a, a grounding wire, an earth wire, <coughs> to ground the chassis to the rest of the earth system, uh, which is basically to the uh, the heating pipes in my house, because <laughs> my shack is upstairs, so I haven't got any other way of getting an earth down there. We have got some um, counterpoise out in the garden off the back of these two antennas and an earth rod, so uh, we do as good as we can. All right, let's, let's plug it in anyway and see how we get on. I just had to make up a patch lead and a few other bits and bobs. Um, we go. Excuse all the wires. Um, yeah, so we've got main antenna, the lead to the radio, the TR control line, and then the reference antenna, which is the silver plated plug on the end there. So let's fire it up and see what it does. There's the manual. A bit, a bit cheap that they don't uh, provide a manual, but I'll have to uh, print one off. This is inside the unit. Um, not the best quality bit of kit, but you know it's okay. You can see like there's a bit of wash on the PCB there, um, which isn't great. Um, but it's you know it's not it's not a, a piece of Kenwood equipment. <laughs> it's a budget <coughs> little unit. But um, the, one of the things you do have to do is there's a jumper in here, which you can see there on the board, which um, you have to set. Uh, whether you want to use the internal whip which is connected there through the case or an external 
antenna. Now the factory default it comes set for the internal whip and you have to move the jumper over to that position there to use the uh, external antenna with the maximum sensitivity. You can do it with the button on the front but um, I'm not interested in the using the internal whip. This is pretty good. <clears throat> it does take some getting used to and you have got to <clears throat> be patient and do some knob fiddling but it does seem to work really really well and don't you know it's not going to drop your S meter all the way down to zero it's just for taking out the noise um, unless you've really got some really strong local interference um, so but I'll just give you a quick demo here um, I'll turn up the noise and uh, so you've got a strong quite a strong local noise here There we go, and we switch the unit in. There we go, a slight time delay. And that has took a lot of the noise away. That's just down below, that's about an S4. But if there was a signal there, you'd probably hear it under that. Take the unit out. It's gone up to an S7, but all the noise, it's just that top end noise that's coming with it. Um, so it really does work. Okay, another signal. So we the unit on, turn it off. Really good example here. We've got a nice clear signal. If I take the MFJ out, switch it back in. Take it back out. Switch it back in. Another good example here. A distant sort of weak French signal. Overall, I'm really, really pleased with the MFJ 1026. It's uh, it's done. Uh, all that I expected and quite a lot more really. Um, it does take a bit of practice getting used to it and the best recommendation I can give anyone that's buying one of these is don't expect magic bullets. Um, if you've got very long distance interference that's quite a way away from you obviously it can't attenuate that out it, but it will get rid of an amazing amount of noise and uh, certainly if you've got very strong local signals like plasma TVs, down lighters, mains transmitters it will it will totally get them take them out. It does take some fiddling and uh, you do have to play around. I mean, I can ignore the TR delay button. I don't need that uh, because I have the lead. Um, but um, really, the, I mean, in, in real terms, sometimes you also will find that um, it's just really one of your antennas is picking up more noise than the other. So what you can actually do is turn them both down, just listen to the signal, uh, just turn that one up and then turn that one up and sometimes you don't actually have to do anything because it's just one of your antennas is picking up a bit more noise for whatever reason than the other and um, that can sometimes be the case but more often than not the, they both have to hear the, the noise both of the the auxiliary and the main antenna have to hear the noise for it to be able to do anything about it 
Um, I found the frequency high low button doesn't really make a great deal of difference, um, but you can use that. The phase and normal button definitely does, so if you can't shift it on the one setting, change it over and play with the settings and you'll find you'll be able to actually take it out. So the phase, uh, the phase reversal button uh, invert button does actually work. Um, try, try. It's, it's just trial and error, really. Um, but it's amazing. I mean, um, I haven't got any very strong local um, uh, signals, really. Um, but it's just great for clarifying local, very weak signals and bringing them in above the noise level. Um, I mean, it's it's thoroughly recommended just for doing that more than anything. Um, so big thumbs up to the uh, 1026.